Hi guys, this is Dr. Tom. Hey, and I just want to highlight a couple things that you might find helpful for the uh, binary code STEM challenge. And uh, a little history on binary code overall. Hey, about 50 years ago or so, we invented something called the vacuum tube. And what a vacuum tube really does is, is it allows electricity to flow through it while it turns on and off in patterns. And vacuum tubes really made it possible for us to invent televisions and computers and other things like that that kind of rely on on and off patterns. But the big problem was they were big, they were expensive, and they tended to burn out easily or overheat easily. And um, luckily for us, it wasn't too long before transistors were invented. And uh, like vacuum tubes, transistors help electricity to flow and turn on and off in patterns. But unlike vacuum tubes, they're hundreds of times smaller. And so you can use lots and lots of them in circuits that are connected to each other in integrated and meaningful ways. And as transistors were being developed, so was something called the microchip. And what the microchip really provided was a place for all the electrical parts of a circuit to be located. Right? And these days, each microchip can actually hold millions of transistors each of which can be used in an integrated circuit. Uh, maybe most importantly, microchips can store information in the form of computer memory. And as it turns out, the information in a microchip is stored in a kind of alphabet that we know as binary code. And sometimes binary code is also called machine code, and it takes into account the fact that computers can really only produce two types of data, on and off. So to symbolize the ons and offs of a computer, somebody smartly decided to choose zero to symbolize off and one to symbolize on. And so that's it for our binary code, a two number binary code, much simpler than our 26 letter alphabet overall. And sometimes binary code is grouped into units. One single unit is oftentimes called the bit and then eight units together to form kind of a word like thing is oftentimes called a byte. And so now back to our STEM challenge. And so the STEM challenge for our students in this case, in part one, we want them to make a binary code bracelet where they actually make a bracelet that spells out their first name in binary code. If their first name is less than four letters or they can choose to do their initials or they can choose to do a nickname. But if you use more than four letters, the bracelet gets too big and you wind up using too many beads. All right, we usually have them choose a dark color to represent zero and a light color to represent one, and then a third color to serve as a spacer. So kids make the binary code bracelets. They usually love them, get super excited about them, and it's really, really fun. And then for the second part, we ask kids to figure out some kind of artistic representation of binary code. And uh, they can do that in a variety of ways. You can see a couple examples up there. Um, but but it, we're just asking them to think about how could they artistically represent the significance and importance of binary code in our world. And they can have some fun too if they want. If they just want to do something fun, they can do binary code with M&Ms or binary, binary code with veggies like you see up there right now. And that's kind of up to them overall. But that's it for our STEM challenge. Hope you like it and hope you've learned something about binary code in the process. Take care.